Personality intro. Bransfield. In a field. Bransfield! The Mega Drive and Amiga's relationship was a strange one in that it definitely had one, but also it wasn't exactly like they were firm bedfellows. Games were ported one way or the other, seemingly thanks to the ease of the conversion from one format to the next. It was great because Amiga owners got Mega Drive games and Mega Drive owners ignored Amiga games. There were a lot more tweaks and tucks between the formats than we see these days, thanks to the actual significant differences in hardware on show. But there were plenty of games hopping from Amiga to Mega Drive in more or less direct say-what-you-see fashion. Thinking those thoughts, I decided to put together a few videos about different kinds of ports between the two formats. Here are the games that just ended up being pretty straight ports to the Mega Drive from the Amiga and vice versa in a handy little video list format. I say direct, but then I start with a game that was actually improved in its porting. The Mega Drive version of Desert Strike is a bona fide classic, a wonderful game in a series that I'm still sad died off. Heli choppering around in a conflict that definitely has nothing to do with the first Gulf War, blasting jeeps and picking up MIA soldiers is a brilliant, subtle mix of Arcadian simulation-y. It is, was, and is, and was, and is great. But EA put effort into its port to the Amiga and improved a couple of key aspects, both of which combined to make it the definitive version of the game. That's not something that tended to happen in Mega Drive to Amiga ports. The graphics were improved, making them more colourful and detailed, along with including things like smoke effects. The sound, meanwhile, puts the Sega original in the shade. Digitised from real, actual, proper Apache helicopters, or maybe just training videos of them, but still, it made for a stark improvement of the whole atmosphere thing. Not to mention the missing in action soldiers shouting out for help. Over here. Help. Help. Over here, over here. Help. Honestly, I've never been able to go back to the Mega Drive original with any real joy after playing the Amiga one so much as a kid. It just sounds bad on Sega's machine. Games like the Chaos Engine were obvious to push to a console audience, with the newly christened Soldiers of Fortune, at least in the States, playing out much like it did in its Amiga debut. Just with worse music, because the Chaos Engine's music on the Amiga is the stuff of legend. I've realised from my research into this that saying the Chaos Engine's music on the Amiga 500 is objectively better than that on the Mega Drive is for some reason a statement not everybody agrees with, so that's weird. Still, I am right. There were other changes in the game's leap from Commodore to Sega. The Mega Drive lets you see more of the screen, but has a more saturated look in its colour palette. The preacher becomes a scientist and the gentleman loses his pipe because won't somebody please think of the children? And obviously the controls on the console are a bit different because multi-buttons. But generally speaking, this was a great game given a solid port to the console. It wasn't as good as the Amiga original it spawned from, but it still deserved more success than it got. Alien 3 on the Amiga made a damn fine show of itself, with a version that, unless you were to see both versions played side by side, say, or maybe one after the other, you wouldn't be able to tell which version was which. Ah. Walked right into that one, didn't I? Okay, so you can tell. Quite easily and obviously, you can tell. But that doesn't change my attitude. The Mega Drive original is one of the best licensed games ever made, even if it is stupidly hard and makes no sense when compared to the actual film it's based on. Why Ripley has more weapons than Vasquez did in the game tied in with a film where they struggle to get hold of anything more than some scissors is beyond me, but hey. But there's the thing, it's a great game and the Amiga port maintains that. It looks the part, it plays nearly identically and it's just solid fun all round. Unfortunately, the superb Mega Drive soundtrack didn't quite make the jump to the Amiga though, so for that reason I'm gonna have to ask the Amiga port to leave. 
while a lot of the ports from the Amiga to the Mega Drive didn't lose a whole lot in the jump, music aside, there was always the feeling it was a case of diminishing returns, as though there wasn't really much point in shunting the games from their home format to the black box of Sega. Cannon fodder just reinforced that vague theory because it didn't even come out in the States, instead being confined to European shores for its Mega Drive port. And that's a shame, because aside from a couple of things, yes, I'll get to them, this was a fine port of an Amiga classic. Almost everything came across as it should have, the result being more people able to play this wonderful mix of light strategy and satirical warfare. It's fun, satisfying, infinitely challenging as it progresses, and only a little bit really annoying when it gets way too hard. I say almost everything came across though, because the Mega Drive was left wanting next to its Amiga dad? Is that the way to describe this? Hmm. Anyway, the music wasn't all that on the Sega box, and the entire War Never Been So Much Fun song from the original was excised, which is actually a war crime as far as I'm concerned. But the biggest issue was one of control. It works fine on the Mega Drive, but Cannon Fodder is a game made for mouse control, and by crikey it shows when things start getting harder. A great game and a good port, but really one you should stick with the Amiga for. Doot 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 do and so on. Virgin's take on Aladdin for Mega Drive is, of course, the stuff of legend. The perfect platformer with animation as good as anything Disney of the day could put out and all that. Well, the animation was great, but not Disney quality, and the platforming was frustrating and not actually all that wonderful, but hey, we were young and stupid and crikey, it did still look amazing. You know, that Aladdin. Even with all its success, it was still a surprise to see the Street Rat make a jump from Mega Drive to the Amiga a year after its release. More surprising still was the fact that the Amiga version, quite clearly cut back in many ways, still played as well as the original. Let's just ignore the previous chunk of words I spewed where I intimated that actually Aladdin was never really all that. Doesn't fit the narrative I'm going for here. No, the Amiga version didn't look as spiffy as the Mega Drive one. It ran slower, the colours weren't as vibrant, and it took up approximately 6.3% of the screen by my expert calculations, but it was a surprisingly solid port of something intimately associated with the Mega Drive, and for that fact alone it becomes a special version of the game. Chuck Rock was one of those examples of a game made to compete with the console platformers, but coded specifically for the Amiga and made with a certain… Uh, attitude about it. A definite Britishness, let's say, though I'll avoid any real commentary about the implied sexual assault by the game's antagonist Gary Gritter, and crikey that pun hasn't aged well. Anyway, to the point, Chuck Rock is one of those that feels like great fun on its home machine, but that's because it's very much in the context of the machine. The Amiga wasn't known for its plethora of platforming legends, so anything remotely decent would be fast-tracked to the top of everyone's must-buy lists. Its port to the Mega Drive saw some differences, but was pretty much straightforward, and that's where it fell down, because the Mega Drive already had some genuinely great platformers, so nobody in console land cared about a fat bloke trying to rescue his put-upon wife from the clutches of an unfortunately named sex pest by throwing boulders at dinosaurs. Ah, video games. While Desert Strike saw EA push the boat out for its conversion, Road Rash went the more traditional route and presented Amiga players with a manyly, muchly, verily pared back conversion. The Mega Drive original isn't exactly buttery smooth in its silky frame rate, to the point where there'd probably be dozens of frothy mouthed YouTube videos about it where it released today, but that leap to Amiga saw what wasn't even the smoothest of rides to begin with become even choppier. Chopperer. Chopperer. Bike pun. This is another one I played first and most on the Amiga. We didn't get a Mega Drive until a few years later, you see, so this was the version I was most knowledgeable about and most attached to. But while I was absolutely right to stick with my nostalgic favourite when it came to EA's War in the Gulf, with those rashes on the road I completely switched allegiance as soon as I put any real time into the Mega Drive original. It runs better, it works better, and it just is better at its home. Technically an Atari ST game made in tandem with the spec'd up Amiga version, I don't think there's anyone around who actually considers Speedball 2 as anything other than a pure Amiga classic. So why do I even bother pointing that out? Because this is the internet where pedantry was invented in 1998, of course. 
Speedball 2 is magnificent and I still love it dearly. A stylish and fun arcade sports game, it mixes rugby and tennis and football and extreme violence and ice cream and it's just great. It looks fantastic, it runs smoothly, it's got depth. I've still never managed to get through a whole league playthrough with my original starting lineup intact and yeah, it's great. I still love playing it now. So why wouldn't it be ported to the Mega Drive and why wouldn't it do well there? Why indeed? It looked less metallic, I'd say, on the console port, but beyond that, the Mega Drive version was pretty much the same as the Amiga original. Except for the music. Where the Chaos Engine might have been something people do argue about, in Speedball 2 this is not the case. The music on the Amiga was brilliant, the music on the Mega Drive makes my ears bleed. Not literally, also probably literally, but mute it or stuff your lugs with cotton wool and it's a game worth being played on either format all the time, forever. And there's your list. See. This was an era where the SNES didn't get things like Road Rash or the better version of Aladdin, which made the Amiga feel that little bit special. I mean, everything from the Amiga went to the SNES from this section, but what do you think I am? Capable of making neat and tidy points that are wrapped up at the end of a video? 